Hey, Barry McGinnity here, CEO and founder of the Game Changers, back for this episode of the podcast, The Comeback Game with Dave Jennings. Dave, we've had you on before, mate. You're back due to popular demand. How are you doing today? Yeah, good. Thank you for having us back. Excited to come back on the show. We got some great feedback last time. Yeah, so I, I guess t- today's episode, uh, I wanted to make a little bit different. So uh, obviously, as you know, the theme of the, the, the podcast has been The Comeback Game around how people have overcome adversity to get to where they are. And you shared on your last episode a lot about that. You, you shared around how you uh, started your first business through selling some of the MCG. Um, today, I want to talk about something a little bit different. And it's something that I know is very close to both my heart and yours. And that is around business systems. And before you typical A-Tripe entrepreneurs uh, put down this podcast, listen up. Because it is something that I know for myself and maybe even you too, Dave, uh, resisted a long time. I know my first business, yeah. you know, we grew up to a multi-million dollar turnover. I had 14, 15 odd staff and four, four contractors and the business relied on me. And the issue became about when uh, I started to have a bit of a mental breakdown. I started to physically uh, be incredibly unwell due to the amount of hours that I was working. And as at that point, I noticed that I couldn't step back from my business for an hour, let alone a day, a week or a month without things falling apart. What was your first kind of experience of, of business systems and getting into systemization? Um, my very first experience with the system actually came from my dad. So when I was eight years old, he developed a thing called the sheet and it was something that he designed for my brother and I, where basically he listed out all of these activities that my brother and I could take and we would earn points. Things like cleaning the car, taking out the trash, cleaning the birdcage, being good to your brother, all these sorts of things that he thought were really important to bringing up, you know, a great set of humans. So he had things like praying and going to bed by a certain time. And what would happen was uh, you would collect all of these points at the end of the week, all of those points would get added up. And then he had um, like a scoring system on the back where if you got over 300 points, you got $7 pocket money. You had over 400 points, you got $8. Now, I figured out how to game this system and I dominated it. I got to the point where uh, dad said, look, I'm going to have to change the rules and this final calculation. Otherwise you're going to, in his words, bleed me dry. So he ended up adjusting the legend because I outplayed it every single time. My brother, on the other hand, he was a bit different. He didn't enjoy the sheet. Uh, He didn't give a, a sheet about the sheet. (laughs) Um, And what ended up happening, like, I, I kind of realized I connected with this idea. Sometimes you learn the rules of the game and then you uh, learn how to play to those rules to your best of uh, your ability. And that's how you get the most out of it. So that was the very first experience I had of systems. And then I had a few more occasions along the way, you know, we set up a rock and roll clothing music store that we built up as a franchise and we franchised the first store. Um, I also did some work um, in the stock market education space and we used to, design trading systems, which would be like a, 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 almost like a system for trading the market, thinking upfront, how do you get in? How do you get out? How do you decide how much money you put into the market? So I had all of this past programming that systemization and, and predefining sets of rules um, create consistent outcomes. But then I got stuck when I got to my digital agency like you. I, for some reason, I thought this business was different. And you hit the the nail on the head as far as I see it all the time. Business owners come up with these myths, these misconceptions, beliefs around uh, systemization and systems that are just flat out wrong. Things like, you know, if I systemize my business, it's going to remove the creativity. Um, I'm going to have to be the person who creates the systems. Um, systems need to be complex. I need a systemize like McDonald's. You know, McDonald's has been systemizing for 60 years. And for some reason, business owners think, well, I need to be systemizing like them. No, you need a systemize like McDonald's did 60 years ago, not how they are right now. And there's a bunch of this just rubbish that I, I even just picked up, you know, along the way. And it wasn't until I started retesting all of those misconceptions. Like I got stuck in my digital agency for about 10 years because I thought this business couldn't be systemized because Mm -hmm. Google keeps on changing its algorithms and online landscape is, you know, always changing. So if I write a system, a system's going to get out of date. And that's 
that held me in that business until I had that, that moment, which really shook me. And I thought, no, I've got to figure this out because I see other people doing it. There are mm. business owners who build businesses that work without them that are profitable. And it's not that they go sit on a beach and do nothing. Oftentimes it's just stepping out of the operations so they can work more strategically on the business. And I wanted to be in that place where I, I had the choice. Now mm. I went on a little bit of a rant there because we started talking about systems. I'll let you chime in. There's a couple of cool things that you said, and I want to bring people's attention to. The first thing is around, obviously, uh, you gamed the system. Not really. In Robert Kiyosaki's words, like you, you learnt the rules so you knew how to break them. Yeah. And this is the interesting thing is that here's yourself and your brother. You loved the sheet or found a way to love the sheet through finding a way to a path of least resistance, finding a way to make the most amount of money, no, no doubt with the least amount of time. Your brother, on the other hand, resisted the sheet and therefore didn't probably make a fraction of what it was that you were making on a week in, week out. And even more than that, I'm sure that once your dad changed it because you were bleeding him dry, your brother made even less money. And this is the interesting thing that we see, like, and I see how that correlates from, from, from a simple like chore sheet essentially to business, is that when you have the right systems in place and your staff are aligned with them, your business can make a lot more money and it can thrive well beyond you as a business owner. To the point, as you said, that you can step out for a day, a week, a month, a year, and the business will keep on turning around. And I guess for me, it's a difference between running a business like a slot machine and running a business like an ATM. Like a slot machine, you go to the casino, you put your money in, you pull the lever, and you hope that those cherries line up and you win the jackpot. But let's be honest, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's, it's not that simple, right? And I don't know what the odds are, but it's, it's probably one in a million that you're going to actually win jackpot and, and clean the machine out. On the other hand, if you run your business like an ATM, right, provided that you have things in place that are constantly topping up that account, all you need to know is, is you have your card and know your PIN number and your ability to walk to an ATM. You put the, put the card in, press your PIN number, and you can withdraw money. And as long as there's more deposits getting made than withdrawals, you're winning. And this is, I guess, what systems can create for a business and a business owner is the consistency of those deposits into the account because you have a machine or a way of doing things that actually allows a business owner to become more creative because they're not thinking about trying to manage things. And this is, this is what I know uh, we both speak about a lot is the difference between the integrator and the visionary. And these two roles I talk about in the book Rocket Fuel and the visionary's role of, of kind of being able to go and create those big ideas and, and you know, 20 great ideas, be in that creative space, be a lot more in that intu intuition and intuitive space as opposed to the integrator is more so around detail, specificity around making things done, around implementing things in such a way there's consistency, but also pushing back on the visionary when required to ensure the team keeps rowing in the same direction. Exactly. Yeah. I think understanding the personality type of you, the individual, the person watching this, and then recognizing um, if you are a visionary, there's a very good chance that um, systems aren't, in your genetic makeup. You are, you don't get excited by the idea of writing out detailed process, you know, step one, step two, step three, and drawing detailed process maps. And, and that's okay. That just means you need to find the yin to your yang, mm. find the person who does because they're so important in business. And once you find that person who becomes your operations manager, the person who manages the team, who makes sure that they're following those systems and processes, then, that frees you up to step back and then you start to be able to work on your unique ability, like where you mm. have the biggest impact, where you're, you get the biggest leverage point. And that's what happens when a business owner gets started. It's usually them. They're on their own at the start. They see a, a problem out there in the world that they want to go solve. So they go out there and start solving and it's just them and they're, you know, selling and, delivering for clients and answering problems and it grows up to that certain point but then they get trapped because then they're stuck in the operations and they're usually going out and selling and then they'll get the work and then they do the work and then they finish the work and then they go out and sell again and it's just this loop that they end up getting stuck on and a lot of the skills that they they used and developed that helped them grow the business to that size gets reinforced because, mm. you know, from the outside looking in, the business owner is a great success. You know, their business is flying along. Everybody's going, oh, wow, he's really kind of making it. So all of that is then getting reinforced that that's good behavior to the business owner. 
But what happens then to move it through to that next level, a lot of the behaviors you have to let go. You have to let other people step in. You have to not be that micromanager. You have to think in terms of process and consistency. And that's where they kind of have trouble. And that's why you need a, some people can do it. You can evolve, but a much quicker way. And it's talked about in rocket fuel is to have both of those personalities. Yeah. You've got the visionary and uh, that, that sort of operations person, the integrator. Yeah. I, I think in many cases, the business owner is actually the worst person to create systems. And, and, and let me explain that. The reason being is often as a business owner, like we grow this business from scratch and we buy it and we learn it. We learn that, learn the ropes and we end up wearing all these different hats. And because we do it for so long and, and often so well, we have to, to, to get the business to grow until a certain point, we become unconsciously competent of some of the things we're doing. And now that we talk about conscious competence, meaning that you're aware that you're competent in doing something, and then it moves to unconscious competence where you start doing things automatically. Now, I'm sure many of the, the, the viewers, listeners today can relate. Like how many of you had an experience where you pulled up in your driveway and you're like, damn, I can't actually remember driving home. I can't actually remember the road home. Because in many ways, you've driven that same road so many times, you become unconsciously competent about driving through that road. Now, of course, it wasn't unsafe. You were aware while you were driving, yet it was kind of in the background because it's been trodden so many times in the past. And I think that us as business owners, if we do go to create systems, I know myself from the earlier days when I tried to do it, I missed a lot of steps out because you know I remember the steps that were kind of critical or important, or maybe the steps that I weren't as unconsciously competent in doing, but there's a lot of steps that were missed out in the process because it was kind of second nature to me. And what I found a way that we, we teach our clients to do things, and I know it's very similar through your systemology approach, is that we actually teach the business owner to create the system for writing systems, the main system around, how, this is how we're gonna document things, this is how we're gonna put things in place. And then actually when they're training their staff members on certain things, have them create the systems for you and for your business. Because what that means is the staff member's not aware of how to do something. They'll ask the question that elicits that next step. And you as a business owner to review it is, is A, a lot more effective and efficient way of using your time. And B, it's a better way of doing things because your staff also take ownership for it, which comes back to your first kind of conversation about yourself and your yeah. brother and the, uh, the weekly scorecard. It, it also, it begins an important process of um, breaking a very bad habit that the business owner picks up, which is that habit of, always wanting to solve the problems for staff members. You, you, what happens is staff members get trained. Oh, when something's going wrong, I go to David because he solves the problem and he does it very quickly and very easily. Um, when my operations manager came in, Melissa, she started to retrain me and made me realize um, while I might think I'm being helpful to staff by answering their problems, what I'm actually doing is teaching them uh, learned helplessness. I'm teaching them rather than solving your problem, looking for a solution, rely on someone else, which happened to be me at that time. So what she got me to do, she, there's a better way to do this. Now, as we build up the systems inside System Hub and there's a place there, if you really, really want to help them and they come to you and say, I've got a problem and you don't want to just say, hey, go away. You say, all right, well, let's sit down. Let's hop into System Hub and see if it's there and see if we can find the solution. So I still get the feeling like I'm helping them because we're finding that solution, but I'm also training them in their head. Now they go, well, if I go and ask Dave, the first thing he's going to do is go to System Hub anyway to see, do we have a system or a process that already solves that? And then over time, it's got to a point where the team member would first go to System Hub. They would only come to me then afterwards of, hey, I tried to find the answer for this, couldn't find it, or it wasn't mentioned in this particular step, then can you help me? Yeah. That was the first step. And then the step beyond that is then when we started to plug in department heads and then they stopped coming to me, they would then go to System Hub first, they'd go to the department head next, and then I was the last line of defense. Yeah. And then over a period of time, those numbers started shrinking more and more and more. And now very rarely in our digital agency, which I still own that Melissa runs, I don't hear boo out of that side of the business mm. because it goes, you know, she's the, now she's got plugged in even uh, before uh, me uh, after the department head. So it goes team member, system hub, department head, Melissa, me. So it only gets to me when, you know, the house is burning. Um, but usually she gets to it before then anyway. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. a very different place to be. 
Yeah. I, I can honestly say like for any business owners out there right now, entrepreneurs that haven't got this in place, it is the most rewarding feeling. Like I can't tell you how amazing it is to be on holiday. Like this week I was in Hobart and I could see that new clients were signing up. I see, I could see that clients were, were, were getting wins and being coached and achieving great results. I could see that everything was happening. My, my meetings were being ran without me being involved. And I honestly reckon there's no greater feeling to sit back and relish in the accomplishment of building a business that is able to grow beyond you and without you. To be in a position where you can step back for a week, a month or three months, and when you re-enter, the business is actually further along than when you left it. And, and like you, Dave, uh, my staff often tell me to leave things alone and get away now because typically when I jump in, I, I break things. So I'm very good at creating new ideas and new strategies and, and new directions of where I feel the company should, should explore and the innovation aspect. But as far as day-to-day -day operations, like that, they've got it. They don't need me to be involved with those things. As, as your team gets better, because there's like a magical thing that starts to happen once you get good systems and processes in place, and then you get good staff in place. Um, I remember one of the first times we were going to meet um, in person was actually going to be um, in Melbourne for uh, an EO event. They had me coming along to run um, uh, uh, like a full day training for the Melbourne chap chapter of EO. Um, the, the week before that event, I, I thought, well, you know, I, I want to make sure I nail this, you know, EO is a great organization, really good fit for our systemology. Um, so I still thought I'd go check out the venue. It was Phoenix in, um, Richmond in, in, in Melbourne, Australia. So I went along to the event and I got there, uh, and she showed me the room and then I started to, to stress out. This was on a Friday afternoon because the room was really, really small. And I said, you know, based on the number of registrations they've got, um, you know, we're not going to be able to hold the capacity. People are going to be standing at the back of the room and it's going to, and then, um, so I started to get stressed and as the business owner, you know, I, I, I'm just flying into like immediate action. I've, I've called Jillian. I've said, this is uh, what I know. I called EO. I had two or three contacts there. And I said, this is what I know. Cause they said, we can't move you down into the bigger room. Cause we think it's, it's um, full. Um, so I've, this is Friday afternoon and I've shot a hundred different arrows to try and fix this problem. Um, I get home and my wife's like, just take a breath. You know, I'm sure it'll all work out. You know, they'll, they'll figure something out. Worst comes to worst. You'll, you'll make the room work. Um, I get a call first thing Monday morning from Jillian going, yeah, look, um, I already spotted that it's been flagged. I've let them know we are the people that have been moved down into the room underneath. Um, it, it's, it's all taken care of. And I, I started to realize how often I do that in business where mm. I insert myself in, make myself the problem when the team member had it already under control and well handled. And yeah. it happens more frequently than I, I would like to admit uh, to the point now where I'm, I'm really starting to let go. And I just realized great people with great process, let them do their thing. And then if a mistake or an issue does hop up or pop up with a great team member, I kind of want that to happen because then that's the lesson that they learn. And then it never happens again because mm -hmm. we've got a systems thinking um, value in our business and you know we go back and adjust our, our systems and processes and improve so that might then become a check so i kind of mm. now uh not that i want problems to happen but i don't want to be the one that's always solving them because if i am mm. i will be forever solving those problems if i'm going to solve a problem i need to be solving a really high quality problem not a you know do we need to put an extra table at the back of this room yeah yeah, I, I, I'm the same, you know, to, to be able to walk into one of my members events, uh, I, I can tell and feel within the first 30 seconds of walking in the room, whether the team have got it or not, whether they've handled it. And they have, because we have a system in place for how to set the room up, how to organize the room, like all this stuff is systemized, which, you know, I can then rest peacefully the nighttime knowing that, that I've got two fallbacks. Number one is the system and number two is the people. And the better the systems you have in place, the better the people can be as well because they can think about solving problems that are outside of those. Whereas if you have a, a, a group of staff, you know, you've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 staff and no systems in place. It's like there's complete mayhem. Like one thing we notice a lot is that we get probably 50 to 6% of clients that join one of our uh, business coaching programs are wanting to sell their business and wanting to get out. And the main reason being is that they've had enough. They've lost a bit of passion and they're, they're ready for something different. And what we notice is that 99% of the time, 
once we help them implement the systems and processes, procedures, you know, rehire the right staff, you know, implement all these changes that we help them go through, 99% of them don't want to sell anymore because they now have an ATM, not a slot machine. They have something that produces them predictable income, predictable profit and works without them, which actually gives them the freedom they're looking to, to, to ascertain through selling the business in the first place, yet they've still kept the asset. Yes. It's funny. I, I, most of the reason or a lot of the times um, the, pe- the reason people want to sell is because they have all of these problems that end up getting fixed when they sell it. I think definitely building a business with the intention of selling it is, is key. I, I had a discussion yesterday with a system hub uh, subscriber who just recently cancelled. And I was like, oh, why did you subscribe, uh, unsubscribe from System Hub? Why, why did you cancel? Um, and she said, well, I signed up to System Hub probably about two years ago. Her name's Jeanette and she runs a company called um, Diggity Dog Daycare. Um, and uh, I signed up to System Hub and she goes, I'm, a, I'm ex-commerce um, and I'm, I built this business uh, with the, the purpose to sell it. Like from day one, I built it up designing to sell it. Um, she was uh, the, um, I suppose, you'd call her the visionary because her sister ended up working inside operations. And she attended the uh, systemology event that I ran in Melbourne. Um, and she spent two years systemizing the business, every aspect of it, got it all loaded into System Hub, worked with a franchise consultant because the plan was to roll out. It's like doggy daycare and they would yeah. have the daycares in all of the different states around Australia. So she built it all out. She um, set it up in, I think it was 2012. So she's been running for a good number of years. Um, and everything was flying along and they were actively logging into System Hub. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? Why, why did you cancel? Um, and then I got the news. Uh, and it's the only time I do a happy dance when someone quits System Hub. Um, she just sold to a very large corporate that bought, uh, they, they built it up to the point where it was franchisable and now it could be deployed throughout. Um, she sold off the back of having the business systemized and it worked without her. They came in and, um, spent, uh, yeah, a good number of multiples to purchase the business. Her and her sister had exited and now she was off traveling the countryside. She connect, ended up connecting me after they canceled with uh, the corporate um, who said, um, you know, one of the reasons uh, we, we got System Hub was for, uh, or, or the business was for all of these different systems. But, you know, being a large corporate, we have this enterprise solution that's already all set up. What we need to do is we need to export everything out of System Hub and then move it into into our platform. But for me, that was such a, like a huge win Mm. for me to kind of go, we could take someone from, you know, not, not having those systems in place, building up to a point that it's systemized and then it sells. And then I I had Mm. another one just recently. I always love using client examples, but I did also recently, I got a video production business, Melbourne video production. We just did the same thing. Um, And we've got a mutual friend, Dan Lenny, one of his clients uh, ended up purchasing um, uh, Melbourne video production, which was a, a division of uh, Melbourne SEO services, which is that digital agency that I ran. So it's a case of building up systems. That is the asset that you end up selling that someone wants to buy. Um, mm. So it's whether you sell or not is I suppose a different thing, but, but I think uh, that is the point at which the business owner actually has a big capital event. Yeah. You can pull small amounts out, but upon sale, that's when you get a big chunk. Yeah. And I, I think, as you said to my belief is that everyone should have the intention to be able to, to build a business, to be able to sell it. Not that they choose to sell it, but if your business is saleable for a high multiplier, it means that systems and processes and the teams are in place that the business is operating without the business owner. And that, that is a, a very sweet spot to be in. Now, speaking of build to sell, uh, you've got something very exciting coming up. And I remember reading a book many, many years ago called build to sell. Um, do you want to share with the guys around your system sub and, and just drop a few of the incredible names you have uh, on the system sub at delivering some uh, phenomenal content? Well, I've got Barry from the Game Changers is going to be on the event, supported by a whole bunch of other speakers as well. So um, we run an event called the Business System Summit. It's the second time we've run it. When I had the insight that systems, processes, and checklists were the most important asset in business. I thought, how can I extract the best systems and processes from industry leaders across the world? So the way that we run the event, I break it up into sales, marketing, HR, finance, and management. 
And then I get a handful of speakers underneath each of those different departments to share the systems that they use inside their business. So people like John Warillo, who wrote that book, Built to Sell, uh, Mike Michalowicz, who wrote that book, Profit First, uh, Alan Dibb, who did the one page marketing plan, uh, Pete Williams, who did Cadence. Like, well, I've just got, um, there's in total, initially it was supposed to be 40, but it ballooned to a little over 50. I've got 50 of these industry experts and I've said to them, here's the brief. Uh, I want you to share a system or a process that you use in your business. We're going to go through it in an interview format. I'm going to get you to say step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. I'll record those. I then give them to my team and then I get my team to do the documentation. So people can attend the event and they'll get a collection of 50 best practice systems that they can then basically copy, deploy it straight into their business start to modify it so it suits their particular business and industry and then you're off and away because i think that's the biggest resistance i've found with people when they join system hub which is um, when, when it comes to systemization no one likes looking at a blank page mm. but if you can start with something and then mm. you customize it it makes it infinitely easier so it's the second time we've run the event it's it was incredibly popular the first time around and this time we're pretty much just up the, the game on every aspect um, and I'm, I'm super excited to sort of start to get the word out. I think, uh, yeah, the, the buzz is, is definitely there and it's going to be a, an epic event. Yeah. So if you're a business owner entrepreneur and you're running a business right now and you're looking to get 50 of the best practice systems from some of the uh, world leading experts, including myself, uh, there'll be a link somewhere below this video. You can click on uh, register for the summit and there's a couple of different options there around uh, registering and watching and obviously then being able to attain those systems from those guys as well. Yeah. Rock and roll. That's it. Definitely awesome. check it out. It's like we deliver a load of value. Like it's definitely worth checking out. I'm, I am biased, but the feedback we get is always amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. And as we spoke about, it's one of those things that business owners don't particularly like to do. And so, you know, this is the way that you don't have to start with a blank page. You get 50 of the best practice systems and it will really obviously start to build out your systems library and also provide you with the, the skills and the understanding of how these people think, how they extract this information. So you can then take that back to your team as well and uh, create a business that will work with and beyond you, without and beyond you. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to hop on here and share a little and hopefully uh, people get some inspiration. And I think the biggest thing, as long as you can feel the passion. The reason I am so passionate about systems is because I know the impact that it has for business owners. I, f I feel for business owners because they are the hardest working mm -hmm. sort of people on the planet. And a lot of them just get stuck. And I want you to be working on the things that you enjoy most that have the biggest impact. And that's what systems give you. They give you that freedom. Yeah. Systems will set you free. That's it. I need it on a t-shirt. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Dave. Uh, thank you to the Comeback Game Nation for listening in. Uh, this has been another episode of the Comeback Game podcast. Uh, please subscribe and like, comment if you haven't already. Uh, many more fantastic episodes to watch. And also click on the link below if you're interested to find out more about the Systems Summit with Dave Jennings and 50 amazing entrepreneurs and business owners. Thanks for your time, Dave. Pleasure. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. If you're in a position that many of our clients were before joining us, which is that your business is controlling you rather than you controlling your business, we would love to have a chat to you to see whether or not we might be the right fit to partner with you to help you grow and succeed in business. Over the past eight years, we've helped hundreds of business owners around the world to grow, scale and succeed in business. Uh, many of our clients report we've helped them to triple their profits and double their time off in 12 months or less. If you jump onto YouTube and notice the hundreds of testimonies, you'd see that this is a common theme amongst them. If you're a business owner that's generating more than $300,000 a year in annual revenue, uh, whether it's 500 million, 5 million, even $10 million a year, and you're looking to take your business and your life to the next level, we might be able to help. If you're noticing that your business is lacking structure, maybe systems or processes, maybe you're not quite attracting enough or, or the right type of quality leads, making enough sales, or maybe you've been having issues finding, hiring, retaining, and training the right team members, we could be a fit for you. Ultimately, we believe that we never have business problems, we have personal problems that are expressed through our business, and a lot of the work we do is with you as a business owner, helping you to constantly upgrade the way that you see life, the way that you make decisions, and the way that you help construct a profitable and purpose-driven business. 
In order for us to do that though, you need to book in a quick uh, 15 minute application call with one of our scaling specialists here at The Game Changers. Through the 15 minute call, we're gonna ask you a bunch of questions to see if or how we might better help you. If we can't help you, we'll let you know politely and do our best to point in the direction of someone that can. However, we can help you, we'll look at booking you a one hour game plan session where we're gonna dive a lot deeper into where you and your business are at right now, where it is that you want to go in the next three, five, and 10 years time, and what are the potential roadblocks or challenges or even opportunities that are along the journey in order for you to get there uh, faster. If you're really feeling that it's time for you to experience the love and the joy of running a business again, if you're really wanting to experience a business that does actually operate without you while still producing profit, uh, we may very well be the right fit. So book in a 15 minute call, we can have a chat and uh, see where we go from there. My name is Babo Diddy and uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully we get a chance to talk soon.